بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا مولانا محمد عليه وعلى آله أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم My brother and my sister, uh, welcome again uh, to the show and we are uh, discussing the story of Musa alayhi salam uh, with uh, Banu Israel and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shown them many signs. And the question that I uh, want you to ask yourself as we uh, recite the ayat together, uh, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed Banu Israel all those signs, uh, think about it, uh, would they ever disbelieve after this? Uh, are these signs not immense in themselves, the ones we discussed in the last uh, episode? Or do you think there's a chance for them to actually forget about it and put it behind them and actually just forget that anything ever took place? And you yourself, when you're asking, oh Allah, give me a sign. Let's say Allah were to give you a sign. Would you stay and would you, as promised, uh, stay sincere and dedicate and commit yourself afterwards? Or is it just an excuse that you're looking for? And if, we're, if it were actually to come, the sign were to come, you would forget about it immediately. So we'll recite together, inshallah, and take up the ayat together. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأوحينا إلى موسى أن أسر بعبادي أن أسر بعبادي إنكم متبعون فأرسل فرعون في المدائن حاشرين إن هؤلاء لشرذمة قليلون وإنهم لنا لغائضون وإنا لجميع حاذرون فأخرجناهم من جنات وعيون وكنوز ومقام كريم كذلك وأورثناها بني إسرائيل فأتبعوهم مشرقين فلما ترى الجمعان قال أصحاب موسى قال أصحاب موسى إنا لمدركون قال كلا إن معي ربي سيهدين قال كلا إن معي ربي سيهدين فأوحينا إلى موسى أن اضرب بعصاك البحر فانفلق فكان فانفلق فكان كل فرق كالطود العظيم وأزلفنا ثم الآخرين وأنجينا موسى ومن معه أجمعين ثم أغرقنا الآخرين إن في ذلك لآية وما كان أكثرهم مؤمنين وإن ربك لهو العزيز الرحيم My brother, my sister, I want you to imagine as Musa receives the command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have to leave. Fir'aun is now going to come and he's going to basically try to kill every one of you. So you have to flee, leave, take all of your, uh, take all the servants, the servants of Allah and asri bi'ibadi, take all the ones who have submitted themselves to me and leave Egypt. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at this moment, subhanAllah, imagine Musa receives the command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He speaks to his people and he's telling them it's time to leave. And there's a lot of fear because as the people are looking, imagine Ben Israel is looking and Fir'aun is gathering all his troops and they're rallying up, getting ready to subhanAllah attack Ben Israel. And now Musa is telling Ben Israel, let's go quickly, rush, leave everything behind. 
but subhanallah, some of them are now clinging on to some of the stuff and trying to uh, take some of it with them, subhanallah. And now Musa and his people are leaving out of Egypt, leaving towards uh, the sea. And Pharaoh is behind them, he's running, get them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna qalilun. Pharaoh is saying, these are a group of people that are, you know, they're pests, they're little, they're small, we're going to take care of them. Lana and they've already caused too much stress, they've already caused us too much annoyance, I'm too frustrated with them. Let's go and let's kill them, this is the end, this is it. So Pharaoh has reached the height of anger and frustration with them, his power is beginning to shake, people are beginning to, you know, look at him in a different way, his, his superiority in the eyes of his people is beginning to uh, vanish because of all the signs that have come from Musa and how his dua was answered, subhanAllah. So what happens, Allah says, فَأَخْرَجْنَاهُ مِنْ جَنَّاتٍ وَعْيُونَ وَكُنُوزٍ وَمَقَامٍ كَرِيمٍ كَذَٰلِكَ وَأَوْرَثْنَاهَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they're about to lose all their gardens and all their valleys and all their springs and all their treasures and all their positions, their generous, their honorable positions, their, their respect worthy, uh, their honorable positions, are all of it is going to be lost. Look at how subhanAllah, just overnight, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can take the power away from uh, the people's, well, if, if, if they experience and if they allow others to experience injustice. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كَذَلِكَ وَأَوْرَثْنَاهَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ Bani Israel is about to inherit all these pleasures and all this wealth and it's going to be a form of a test. What are they going to do? So, فَأَتْبَعُوهُمْ مُشْرِقِينَ Right after them, Fir'aun says, and then فَلَمَّا تَرَاءَ الْجَمْعَانَ When the people of Musa, قَالَ أَصْحَابُ مُوسَى إِنَّ لَمُدْرَكُونَ When the people of Musa see this whole gathering behind them, now they're like, oh no, we are going to finally be de defeated. So imagine after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed Banu Israel all these signs. Imagine the, the ones we've mentioned, the hand, the staff, uh, the, 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 the pests of all kinds, the two types. Uh, we're talking about the, the, the crops that were, uh, that were uh, you know, uh, limited, the water supply, the frogs, uh, all these signs that have come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, the, 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 the skin disorder, all of these things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them. Uh, and now they're saying, oh, inna la mudrakun. Uh, we're not going to be able to come out of this. How are we going to be able to overcome? Look, in front of us, there's a sea. In front of us, there is a sea. Behind us, there is a whole army of pharaonic, uh, you know, soldiers and Pharaoh himself is running after them with full force trying to kill them. So many people from Banu Israel at this moment, they, lo they lose hope and they say this is it, this is the end. And unfortunately my brother, my sister, there are some of us in this time and unfortunately, what do we say? We say, ah, oh, there's no hope. We live in a time where everything is going wrong. Everything from right, left, and center is going wrong. How can we come out of this? How can we come out of this stress? How can there be a way? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا وَيَرُزُقُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبُ Whoever has fear of Allah, consciousness of Allah, this over here is always keeping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, you know, uh, uh, keeping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's remembrance. This over here is always connected with Allah. Whoever is fearful of Allah, conscious of Allah, Allah will always find for him or her a way out. And Allah will provide for him or her from when she or he least expects and from where he or she least expects. So imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showing finally one of the final signs. And this is one of the greatest signs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَى مُوسَى أَنْ يُضْرِبْ بِعَصَاكَ الْبَحْرِ O Musa, take your staff and hit the sea with it. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives Musa the clear command, another again sign with the staff. فَانْفَلَقَ فَكَانَ كُلُّ فِرْقٍ كَالطَّوْدِ الْعَظِيمِ So as soon as, imagine, imagine subhanAllah, people are scared, everybody's scared. Allah tells Musa, no, Musa, do not be scared. And Musa himself says, no, كَلَّا إِنَّ مَعِي رَبِّي سَيَهْدِينَ This moment, خلاص, Musa has reached the level of faith in Allah where he knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to get him out of any difficulty, out of any calamities. No, this is not a time to be scared. There is a way out. He takes the staff and he hits the sea and the sea splits. Can you imagine the sea splits and the right side moves as though it's a mountain and the left side is, uh, moves as though it's a mountain. Can you imagine you're looking up and you're looking up from both sides and the waves are just literally stuck in their place. You can see them uh, almost as though they, they are frozen in, 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 their, in, their, in their physical subhanAllah limitation and they're not coming over you and there's a, a path, a path in, the, in, in, in between subhanAllah. 
And now with this path in between, uh, you know, subhanAllah, some of the narrations say, you know, uh, M Musa's people uh, look at the path and they're saying to Musa, oh Musa, there's a little bit of water left. Can you get rid of that water? So can you imagine, subhanAllah, some of the people of Musa, when they see the sign, they're not like, Ya Allah, subhanAllah, how great you are, how honorable you are. When they see the sign, they're like, oh, there's still some little water. Can you clean that little water? We don't want to get our feet a little wet, subhanAllah. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes to show us that Musa's people, because, you know, sign after sign, it's coming from the favor, you know, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Musa. Now they're going to look at Musa as MashaAllah, he can do everything. We are going to basically just sit idle and wait for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take care of everything. And this unfortunately is what happens when Allah continuously gives us sign after sign after sign. Unfortunately, what, what do we do? Do we really heed? Do we really start to think? And the people who even do heed and, and think after a while, you know, subhanAllah, things go back to the way they were. Look at Pharaoh, for example. Pharaoh sees all these signs. He sees the sea splitting. Does he stop to think, hold on a second, man, this is serious. Musa just managed to split the sea. You know how much, how much, you know how much resources, how many resources and how much uh, money and wealth will be required and manpower, human power will be required to do a project like this, to split the sea in half? That's huge, even in modern text and in modern context, subhanAllah. And so uh, here we see this happen, and what does, what does Fir'aun say? Fir'aun says, no, go after them. Can you, man, at least pause and think about the situation that you're in. At least pause and think Musa could be in, a, in, in the right here. But no, there's no time to think. When you're consumed by power, when you're consumed by your, 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 your arrogance, when you're consumed by anger, when you're consumed by violence and frustration, and years and years of thinking that you're right and everybody's supporting you and worshipping you and, and, and humbling themselves to you as a king, you don't have time to think that you are in the wrong. You've, you've grown to always think that you're right. And so that mentality, subhanAllah, is what's occupying Fir'aun right now and really, really destroying uh, you know, his, his chance of attaining guidance and attaining mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so what happens? What happens is he goes behind Fir'aun uh, or be behind Musa. As soon as Fir'aun and his people go, F Musa alayhi salam manages to get to the other side and Fir'aun and his people are with him. And what is going to happen? Imagine now Pharaoh is after them, after them, after them. He's looking to the right, he's looking to the left. There are these big waves that are ready. What is going to happen? We're going to come back after the break, insha'Allah, to continue. Barakallah feekum wa jazakum Allah khayra. Wa salamu min Allah alaykum wa rahmatu wa barakatuh. Laqad kana fi qasasihim ibra sasihim ibra tulli unil albaad. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-mursaleen. Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammad alayhi wa ala alihi abdul al-salatu wa tamu al-taslim. We're continuing with the story of Musa alayhi salam, peace be upon him. And we have just discussed how he subhanAllah managed by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to split the sea. And you would think that Fir'aun would stop to think and hold on a second, maybe Musa is right here. But no, he's consumed by his arrogance. He's consumed by his tendency to be violent. He's consumed by his need for revenge, by his need to prove himself right. And unfortunately, he's not stopping to think. And this teaches us, my brother, my sister, uh, sometimes we are in a similar situation. We're consumed by our arrogance that we don't pause and, and, and think about uh, the possibility of us being wrong. And, and this should be, subhanAllah, uh, yani we as Muslims should be uh, taught to take pride in our deen, but at the same time, be humble in the way that we perceive knowledge. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, min al -ilm illa qalila. And you have been given from the knowledge only a very little. You see some people, subhanAllah, by holding on to their titles and holding on to their uh, statuses, they think themselves to be very, very worthy and very noble. And that actually allows for them to be arrogant. And this is what Fir'aun is, 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 is dealing with here, dealing with a high self, uh, you know, self, uh, uh, s high sense of self-worth and high self-perception and self-value that is leading him to uh, destruction. And so he goes right after, he goes right after, after Musa and he's saying, I'm going for him, this is it. And what happens now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands Musa, now hit, this, hit the sea back, Allah, Musa hits, uh, Allah tells Musa to do so, Musa does so, and now the sea comes back. Imagine, drowning Fir'aun. As the water is falling on Fir'aun, what does Fir'aun do? Ament, oh, now I believe, Ament, I, I, believe by the, I believe in the Lord of Ben Israel. I believe in the Lord that Musa has brought. Now that he's in a situation where he's fearing for his life, Fir'aun finally turns and says, I am ready to believe. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him, it is too late, it is too late now. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, it is too late, your body is going to, and your, and your, and your whole kingdom is going to serve as an example, Allah says, uh, you know, that we are going to preserve your body so that it becomes a sign for the people that are to uh, come, subhanAllah. And here we see something, again, my brother, my sister, uh, very important. A lot of us uh, always say, you know what, I'm going to wait uh, until tomorrow to repent. I'm going to wait until tomorrow to start the Quran. I'm going to wait till tomorrow <coughs> to fix my relationship with my mom or to fix my relationship with my dad. My brother, my sister, do not delay. Do not put these things off. Do them now. You are not guaranteed a tomorrow. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given uh, Fir'aun so many chances, one chance after the other, one chance after the other. But what happens with, with Fir'aun? He continuously thought, you know what, no, 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 no. He didn't stop to think. And the only time that he stopped to think was on his deathbed. Well, not, he's obviously not sitting on a bed, but when he is confronted with the reality of his death. He's looking at the water coming and now he's finally feeling regretful. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it's too late. So my brother, my sister, do not wait until it's too late for you to ser search for and, 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 and consolidate on the blessing and the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my brother, my sister, has given us uh, you know, uh, so many, so many chances and has continuously given us uh, chance after chance, my brother, my sister. So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saves Banu Israel. And Banu Israel are now uh, ste is is stepping outside of, outside of Egypt. And what happens as Fir'aun and his people drown, uh, there's a lot of gold that is left behind. And also the people of Banu Israel, they themselves have taken uh, some gold from the people of, of Egypt. Whether they borrowed it or they had it, they still had a lot of gold. And this gold was not, subhanAllah, uh, yeah, and it was not rightfully owned as some of the narrations say. And so what happens now Banu Israel is leaving. وَجَاوَزْنَا بِبَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ الْبَحْرِ they came and they're traveling through the sea and they have been finally saved. Imagine how many signs they have seen. And now they come across the people. They come across a group of people that are worshipping some idols. They're praying to some idols. So now what happens as these people are praying to idols? What happens? You know, Musa's people, Ben Israel, they turn to Musa and they say, Musa, why don't you lana ilahan kama lahum aliha? Why don't you give us a God, make us a God like they have a God? You know, look at subhanAllah, all the signs that they have seen. All the signs, sign after sign after sign. And still, their perception of Allah is still constricted and limited to the materialistic world. They say, well, yeah, we believe, we've seen all the signs, but we still want some, we still want some materialistic representation of, the, of, of Allah. Can you imagine all the things that they've seen with their own eyes? Materialistic signs, after sign, after sign. But, no, 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 no. We still want a materialistic manifestation of Allah. So, <laughs> what does he say? إِنَّكُمْ قَوْمٌ تَجْهَلُونَ What ignorance is this? What ignorance is this? These people are obviously wrong, the ones who are worshipping the idols. And I would have thought that after receiving all these signs, you would understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is too, uh, you know, too, too powerful to be restricted and, and, and to be uh, constricted into a physical space or a physical dimension. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above the limitations of our physical world and the, and the, and the dimensional uh, you know, components of our world, my brother, my sister. And he told them, How can I give you a God other than the true Allah who has saved you? And Allah reminds him, وَإِذْ أَنْجَيْنَاكُمْ مِنْ آلِ فِرْعَوْنِ يَسُومُونَكُمْ سُوَ الْعَذَابِ Remember that Allah is the one who saved you from Fir'aun, who used to يُقَتِّلُونَ أَبَنَاءَكُمْ وَيَسْتَحْيُونَ نِسَاءَكُمْ وَفِي ذَلِكُمْ بَلَاءٌ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ عَظِيمٌ Allah is the one who saved you from these uh, calamities that you had to deal with. And then he's, Musa is still trying to remind them and trying to teach them, uh, trying to teach them the real belief and how it is manifested through action and how it is supposed to be, uh, you know, uh, perceived in the mind, subhanAllah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Musa, وَوَعَدْنَا مُوسَى ثَلَاثِينَ لَيْلَ وَأَتْمَمْنَاهَا بِعَشْرِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then told Musa, Musa, you are to come to me at a specific area and you're going to basically for 30 days be receiving uh, the revelation. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, there were 30 days that were uh, that were uh, basically continued uh, by another 10 or followed by another 10. So there were 40 days in, 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 in total. فَتَمَّ مِقَاتُ رَبِّهِ أَرْبَعِينَ لَيْلَةً 40 nights in total that Musa uh, left his people. And what happened when Musa left his people? When Musa left his people for 40 days, or uh, you know, it was supposed to be 30, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has, has, has made an extension uh, of 10, so it was total uh, 40 days. In the last 10 days that Musa was gone, uh, Musa's people began to uh, you know, uh, lose uh, interest in, uh, in, 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 uh, in, in staying patient. They began to grow wary. And like, where is Musa? When is Musa coming back? When is Musa coming back? And they began to lose, subhanAllah, interest in continuing uh, to, be, uh, to be sincere and continuing to be dedicated. Musa, before he left, he turned to his uh, brother Harun and he put him in charge. He told him, Harun, you are basically uh, in charge. Be in charge. I assign you as um, the, temporary <coughs> the temporary leader, excuse me, and Please make sure that you guide others and, and do good and do not basically follow the uh, path or the, uh, you know, the, 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 the direction of, the, of those who are committing uh, wrong or corruption in the land. Now what happened, my brother, my sister? Unfortunately, what happened, subhanAllah, is when he was gone, there was uh, this man. And this man, he was a young boy. 
He was a young boy who grew up in Egypt and he was from Banu Israel, but he was very, very talented. Very talented and one of his talents was his ability to create and design and fashion things. But his talent unfortunately grew unnoticed in, uh, or grew unnoticed in, in Egypt because Pharaoh did not give Banu Israel a chance. So here he is uh, now with Banu Israel, have left Egypt and he comes across uh, subhanallah, uh, you know, the, he's, he's been traveling with, Egypt, with, with uh, Musa as they're going uh, with Banu Israel through all these different places and he comes up with an idea. And subhanallah, this is what happens, you know, when, when, there's, a, when there's a young, uh, a young mind that has not uh, been given a chance to express, uh, you know, the, the, the talent that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him in a good way. That talent may be used in a wrong way. So shaitan comes to whisper to him and he falls, you know, pray to the, you know, to the whispers of shaitan. And he basically tells all of his people from Ben Israel, Oh Ben Israel, the gold that you have taken with you, the gold that you have uh, taken from, uh, from Pharaoh and the Egyptians, it's not good, it's filthy. So why don't you grab it and put it all together, uh, let's put it all together and let's burn it and let's fashion something out of it. Let's take all the filth and get rid of it. Let's purify ourselves. Let's rise above the materialistic uh, you know, inclination. And so they all gather the gold and they're like, yeah, this makes sense, let's gather it. And then he, subhanAllah, this young uh, man, what he does is he actually starts building uh, a god, fashioning a god for them that um, looks like a cow. Because Musa's people have been saying, we need a physical manifestation of God. So he designs this uh, physical uh, cow that looks uh, obviously like a, a very, very elaborate cow. It's very powerful and it's made out of gold. And when he is done, subhanAllah, he basically creates uh, you know, a specific chamber that allows for the air to come in and the air comes out and it makes this noise. It makes this uh, soothing noise or this powerful noise that uh, makes it seem like it's actually alive, that it's actually living. And so when Ben Israel saw this, they're all like, yes, this subhanAllah, it's big and it's powerful and it's gold and, and it speaks, this is God. And they started worshipping the cow. Can you imagine, subhanAllah, we talked about this earlier, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to get rid of any affiliation that they, they have in their hearts uh, for anybody but Allah wants to really purify them and understand what it means to be totally submissive to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why they are taught later to slaughter the cow. And there's a very interesting relationship. And the story of Musa has many interesting parallelisms that we can think about, subhanAllah. But my brother, my sister, think about that. Think about how his own people, even though they were shown so many signs, Allah saved them from Fir'aun and his punishment, and the, the murderous, treacherous uh, actions of Fir'aun and his peoples. And Allah has given them a second chance, and Allah has given them guidance. And Musa has gone where? Musa has gone to receive more guidance and more revelation for the people, and has taken with him a group of the best of the best, the most learned of the learned. But what happens in his absence? People begin to, again, lose focus. And people begin to, again, move away from the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the real uh, belief of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is so unfortunate, but unfortunately it is the reality of so many people. When the signs are there, yes, we believe. But as soon as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, takes them, or as soon as we are, subhanAllah, uh, given the chance to now implement based on the signs that we've seen, we begin to uh, shake off and wear off and we begin to lose that initial drive and the initial uh, energy and the initial uh, vigor and the strength and power and commitment to do. My brother, my sister, think about yourself. How many times has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given you uh, a beautiful, beautiful gift? How many times has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given you the opportunity uh, to see a sign? Maybe one day you're saying, Ya Allah, please help me through this exam. Please help me through this difficult uh, test. Please help me through this uh, you know, uh, you know, court uh, proceeding. Please help me through this procedure. Please heal my brother, heal my sister, heal my mother. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you what you're asking for. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you the bounty that you're asking for. And what happens? You promise, Ya Allah, just do this one last thing for me and I will never steal again, I will never cheat again, I will never hurt anybody again. Ya Allah, please, this is my last chance and I'm asking you please to help me out. And Allah gives it to you and what do you do right after? You forget as though it ever happened. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُوهَا If you try to count even one blessing, if you try to understand that the long or the, the, the overwhelming blessings that emanate from even one blessing, think about the, the, just the gift of sight. Think about how many things are related to the gift of sight and how many blessings come from that gift of sight. If you try to count one blessing from Allah, you would not be able to do so, my brother, my sister. Do not be like those who say, Oh Allah, show us signs, show us signs, show us signs. But in asking for signs, you're only pushing yourselves further and delaying the time that is required uh, or delaying the, 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 the actual implementation of the action. Implement the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be like the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu and the companions of Muhammad sallallahu who as soon as they received the command from Allah, they would implement it right away. 
they would implement it right away. And in their implementation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continued to show them more and more and more signs. Allah will show you the signs. And every promise from Allah is true. It just requires you and your focus and your heart to be in the right place. Remove everything that is hindering you from making that connection with Allah. And Allah will allow you to rise above all these restrictions and see things for what they really are. Barakallah feekum wa jazakum Allah khaira. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته لقد كان في قصصهم عبرة لأولي الألباب ما كان حديثا يفترى ولكن تصديق الذي بين يديه وتفصيل كل شيء وهدى ورحمة لقوم يؤمنون